Hi, this is Filmo Recap. Today we're gonna recap a movie called Pan's Labyrinth, but before we begin don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn the notification bell. The movie begins with an unseen narrator tells of an underground kingdom that was devoid of lies and pain. Long ago the young princess of the realm escaped curious to see the world above, but was blinded by the bright sunlight and all memories of her past were erased. She eventually succumbs to the natural world as her inability to adapt to the new surroundings left. Her helpless her father the king remained hopeful that his daughter would return to her kingdom someday in another place and time. 1944 the Spanish Civil War has been over for five years, but small groups of guerrilla rebels continue to fight the new fascist dictatorship led by Francisco Franco. Ten-year-old Ophelia, a quiet lover of books and fairy tales, is traveling with her mother Carmen to a rural village of Navarro where Carmen's new husband Captain Vidal, an officer of Franco's army, is stationed with his men at an old mill. Carmen is heavily pregnant with Vidal's child. When Carmen and Ophelia arrived at the mill, Stern Vidal shows little concern for his new stepdaughter but takes great care to ensure that Carmen's pregnancy progresses smoothly. He commissioned a local doctor to stay at the mill and tend to Carmen. Ophelia wanders off to the nearby woods where she discovers a strange stone structure. She is found by the doll's housekeeper Mercedes who explains that the structure is an ancient labyrinth that Ophelia should not enter lest she get lost. Mercedes gently ushers Ophelia back to the house. Ophelia and her mother Carmen settle into their bedroom. Ferraro speaks with Vidal in his study explaining that Carmen should not have traveled in such a late stage of an already difficult pregnancy. It becomes increasingly obvious that Vidal only values Carmen as a vessel for his unborn child which he is certain will be a son to carry on with his name. Vital's tyrannical temper is revealed that night when he brutally murders two peasants whom his men mistook for rebel fighters, but who were merely farmers hunting for rabbits. Vidal realizes this after the men are dead, but blames his soldiers for the error. Ophelia sleeps beside her mother in the middle of the night. She is woken by the sound of fluttering wings and beholds a large insect she'd spotted during her journey to the mill. The insect transforms into a tiny humanoid fairy and gestures to Ophelia to follow it. It leads her outside to the stone labyrinth. When Ophelia reaches the underground center of the maze, she is greeted by a fawn, a supernatural creature that is half man, half goat. He explains to Ophelia that she is really the long lost princess from the underground realm. The fawn explains that he had been sent by the king to bring her home, but she must first prove herself worthy of returning. The fawn presents Ophelia with a magic book that will detail three tasks which she must complete by the next full moon. The first task he explains is to retrieve a key from the stomach of a giant toad that lives beneath a fig tree in the forest. He gives her three magic stones which she must feed to the toad. He also tells Ophelia to look for a moon-shaped birthmark on her shoulder that identifies her as the princess. Meanwhile, Mercedes the housekeeper and Dr. Ferraro are risking their lives by secretly aiding the group of rebels hiding in the woods, one of whom is Mercedes' brother Pedro. Captain Vidal is hosting a banquet at the mill for some local political figureheads. Carmen expects Ophelia to attend and presents her with a beautiful new dress and shoes for the occasion. Ophelia accepts the gifts with lukewarm gratitude as she is distracted by the thought of the first task. As Ophelia prepares to take her bath, she examines the magic book which informs her that the task must take place that day. Shortly before the dinner party, wearing her new clothes, Ophelia escapes to the woods. She finds the fig tree and crawls into the cavern below. She manages to feed the magic stones to the enormous toad which vomits out its insides. Ophelia finds the key amid the sticky mess and departs. She returns to the house her new dress ruined. Her mother Carmen sends her to bed without supper. During the banquet, Vidal vows not to rest until every rebel is shot dead, despite her punishment from her mother. Ophelia is pleased with her success at completing the first task, checking on the magic book again while taking a bath. Blood red ink begins to spread all over the page in the shape of a woma. Thud is heard from the bedroom and Ophelia finds her mother collapsed on the floor hemorrhaging from her uterus and begging for help. Ferraro stabilizes Carmen with a powerful sedative and informs Vidal that the outlook for his wife is not good. She must remain on strict bed rest. Vidal orders the doctor to save his son even at the expense of his wife's life. Ophelia is sent to a separate bedroom and is comforted by Mercedes who has become Ophelia's friend and protector as her mother Carmen grows weaker and weaker. During the night the fawn appears in Ophelia's bedroom and asks her why she has not begun the second task yet. 
Ophelia explains that her mother is not well. The fawn gives her the mandric root explaining that when placed under her mother's bed in a bowl of milk and fed with drops of blood it will improve her health. Ophelia obeys feeding the humanoid mandric under her mother's bed with her blood from her finger. Carmen's condition quickly improves and Ophelia is now free to begin her next task that night. Ophelia is again visited in her room by the fawn who gives her instructions for her second task which involves invading the lair of a feared monster and retrieving a golden dagger above all things. Ophelia is warned explicitly to not eat anything from the enormous feast that she will find laid out on the table within the lair. The fawn gives Ophelia a piece of magic chalk, an hourglass, and the aid of three fairies. She is to use the chalk to draw a magic door leading to the monster's lair. Flip the hourglass and return with the dagger before the last grain of sand falls. Ophelia follows the hallway to a large room where a magnificent feast is set out on a large table. At the head of the table sits a child-eating creature known as the Pale Man, completely motionless with two eyeballs set out on a plate in front of him. Ophelia finds that the creature is immobile and doesn't respond to her presence. On the walls, she sees hideous paintings of the pale man devouring children and a large pile of children's shoes in the corner of the room. On the far wall are three cabinet doors, one of which she unlocks with the key she retrieved from the toad and removes the desired dagger from within. As she begins to leave, she pauses beside the table and stares at the platter of grapes. Enchanted by the food and very hungry, she ignores the previous warnings of the fawn and the present warnings of the fairies. Ophelia picks up a grape and eats it. The fairies frantically try to alert her as the pale man jolts awake inserting the eyeballs into the sockets of his palms. Not seeing this, Ophelia eats another grape before she turns to see the pale man approaching her. The fairies try to distract the creature but he grabs two of them and eats them. Horrified, Ophelia runs with the last fairy. The pale man chases Ophelia down the hallway. In horror, she notices the chalk doorway closing as the hourglass runs out. However, Ophelia manages to draw another doorway in the ceiling and barely escapes back to her room. Mercedes and Ferraro make another dangerous visit to the rebels in the woods, bringing them supplies from the storeroom. One of the rebels, Francis, is suffering a form of infection in his leg from a bullet wound. Dr. Ferraro determines the leg must be amputated before gangrene spreads beyond it and takes on the very unpleasant task in the rebel hideout. The fawn revisits Ophelia in her room and she gives him the dagger, but admits that something went wrong during the second task. The remaining fairy guide angrily whispers in the fawn's ear explaining Ophelia's disobedience. He admonishes her for her recklessness and he tells her that with the full moon only three days away, she may never prove herself worthy of returning to the kingdom. The next day loud crashing sounds are heard through the woods. Vidal assembles his men and they rush into the woods to confront what they assume to be attacking rebels but discover a derailed train instead an apparent decoy move and no rebels in sight. Vidal returns to the mill to find that the storeroom is missing a large amount of supplies. He also sees that the lock is not broken or tampered. With this leads him to suspect Mercedes since she carries the only key to the storeroom. He questions her, but she assures him that she had nothing to do with it. Vidal and his men have a direct shootout with the rebels. They callously shoot all the seriously wounded men they find. But when they discover a rebel sustaining only a leg wound, they haul him to the storeroom for interrogation. Mercedes soon learns that the rebel has been captured for torture and rushes to the storeroom in fear that it is her brother Pedro. Mercedes catches a glimpse of the man's desperate face before the door swings shut and sees that the unfortunate prisoner is not Pedro, but an associate nicknamed Tarta. Vidal casually shows Tarta to the array of tools that he will be using to extract information about the rebels. Noticing that Tarta speaks with a heavy stutter, Vidal taunts him with the proposition. If Tarta can count to three without stuttering, he will be set free. Vidal addresses his second in command, who confirms Vital's power to release him. Tarta attempts Vital's challenge, but fails and Vidal begins the torture. Dr. Ferraro is later summoned to the storeroom by Vidal, who wants him to strengthen Tarta for another round of interrogation. Ferraro is horrified to see Tarta reduced to a broken bloody pulp who is begging for death. Ferraro gently euthanizes the poor man angering Vidal, who fatally shoots Ferraro as he departs the storeroom. Later, Ophelia checks on the mandric beneath her mother's bed. She is interrupted violently by Vidal, who discovers the mandric root with disgust. Carmen wakes and Vidal shoves the milk-soaked mandric into her hand, chastising her for letting Ophelia read fairy tales. Carmen insists on speaking to Ophelia alone, and Vidal leaves them. 
Though Carmen and Ophelia had a close relationship, Carmen attempts to prove to Ophelia that magic does not exist and throws the mandrake root into the blazing fireplace. Moments later, Carmen collapses in pain. The mandrake, which had become the embodiment of Carmen's health, is destroyed in the flames. Carmen is dragged into a harrowing labor, which she does not survive. She delivers a healthy son, which is satisfaction enough for Vidal, but Ophelia is devastated by her mother's death, now orphaned and at the mercy of her evil stepfather. Ophelia's only ally is Mercedes. Ophelia admits to Mercedes that she knows that she and the doctor have been helping the men in the woods, but swears to keep the secret to herself. Vidal summons Mercedes to his study that night casually musing about how the storeroom could have been opened so easily. Mercedes knowing that Vidal had discovered her secret prepares to escape that night. She stops by Ophelia's room to say goodbye, but ends up bringing her along as the girl begged not to be left alone at the mill. Mercedes and Ophelia attempt to escape that rainy night, but are quickly apprehended by Vidal and his men. Vidal drags Ophelia back to her bedroom. He locks her in the room, giving his men orders to kill her if anyone tries to break in. He then returns to the storeroom where Mercedes had been brought and bound for torture. Vidal begins the same speech he gave to Tarta, showing Mercedes the various tools he will use to extract information from her. While his back is turned, Mercedes cuts through her binds with a small paring knife that's usually kept hidden in her apron and she attacks Vidal, plunging the blade into his back and then shoving it into his mouth. She furiously warns him not to harm Ophelia and then slashes the knife through the side of his cheek before fleeing into the forest. Vidal, not quite incapacitated and orders his men to bring her back at once. Mercedes arrives at a clearing in the forest before several of Vidal's men catch up to her on horseback. Vital's second-in-command tauntingly approaches her, but a barrage of shots ring out from the surrounding trees. Shooting all the men off of their horses, the surviving rebels emerge from the woods led by Pedro, who embraces his sister as she weeps with relief. Locked away in her room, Ophelia is visited again by the fawn. He has decided to grant her one last chance to prove herself as princess. He tells her that the third and final task is to fetch her infant brother and take him to the center of the labyrinth. Ophelia escapes her bedroom using the piece of magic chalk and sneaks into Vital's quarters where the baby boy is kept. She takes a bottle of sedative that was previously administered to her mother and hides in Vital's room. While he is distracted, Ophelia drugs his glass of scotch heavily with the medicine as he drinks. Gunfire and explosions erupt as the rebels begin an attack on the mill. Vidal rushes to the doorway but begins to stagger as he begins feeling the effects of the drugs. Vidal makes out the blurry image of Ophelia standing in the doorway holding the baby who she had gently taken from his cradle. Vidal stumbles after Ophelia as she runs to the labyrinth with her baby brother. When Ophelia reaches the center of the labyrinth with the baby, the fawn is waiting for her with the golden dagger. The fawn explains that it's the full moon and that the portal to the underground must be opened with the blood of an innocent. He says he needs a drop of the blood from the baby just a pinprick to open the portal and return Ophelia to her true home. Ophelia refuses to let her baby brother be harmed in any way and insists that she would give up her chance at entering the heavenly kingdom for him. Vidal finally catches up to her and sees her talking to nothing but air. He forcibly takes the baby and shoots Ophelia in the stomach before departing the labyrinth. As Ophelia begins to bleed out, she collapses onto the stone portal. Her blood begins to drip into the portal and she faintly smiles as her body becomes still. Vidal exits the labyrinth with the baby only to be met by a score of armed rebels, including Mercedes, waiting for him. Knowing he cannot escape them now, he calmly hands his son to Mercedes, and while looking at his watch, he asks her to tell him one day what time he died. Before he can finish his last request, Mercedes firmly assures him that the boy won't even know his name. Pedro then shoots Vidal in the face, leaving him dead at the entrance of the labyrinth. Mercedes and the rebels rush into the labyrinth and find Ophelia bleeding out onto the stonework. Mercedes weeps uncontrollably as Ophelia draws her last breath. As Ophelia leaves the mortal world, she is transported to a grand hall and sees both her parents alive again sitting atop tall thrones. She has been called home as princess at last to be reunited with the king and queen. The fawn appears and explains that the last task was a test of honor and integrity. Because Ophelia offered her own blood to open the portal instead of her brother's, she proved herself brave and kind-hearted enough to re-enter the underground realm. The narrator explains that Princess became the eventual beloved ruler of the realm and that small traces of her time in the mortal world are still visible, but only for those that know where to look and that's where the movie ends.
Thanks for watching. See you soon and goodbye.